In Tasmania's Nelson Bay River, Sri Minerals has been given the go-ahead for a controversial iron mining project by the Environmental Min Minister Mark Butler after a recent federal court ruling overturned the proposed mine's initial approval. The Tarkine National Coalition Conservation Group believes the mine will have a negative impact on some of the last remaining disease-free Tasmanian devils in the wild. I'm here with a loka that's all for the mine. Now tell me, sir, why are you for it, and why do you think the environmental minister is also backing it? Well, look, here in Tasmania, there aren't that many jobs going around. So this mine will bring in to 70 jobs into the local area, if not more, and that brings money into the area too. How can we afford to knock this back? What about the effects that the mine might have on the local environment? The mine is under strict regulations and the environmental minister thinks they're good enough. So if the bloke in charge says that's good enough, then I'm more inclined to believe him than a bunch of tree huggers. And that's all we've got time for. Thank you, sir. The project must meet certain offset regulations to run. There are 30 conditions in total. These conditions are believed to be adequate, with the environmental minister stating that he has imposed conditions that he is confident will protect those species in the area, which include the endangered Tasmanian devil. Good afternoon, I'm Emma Oldman and today I'm here to talk to Mr Devil about the proposed mine in Tasmania. We have this problem, you see, with this facial tumour. It's terrible, I tell you. It's killing us all. And there ain't many of us left with the area without it. Like old Mr C, down in the area next to mine, got himself into a bit of a biff about the other week. Tell you what, next minute, he's got this horrid thing on his face. Before you know it, he's dead. Is that the devil facial tumour disease that you're referring to? From what I understand, it's an infectious cancer spread as a transmissible cell line and it's so unique and deadly to your species because of the low genetic diversity within the Tasmanian devils. Is that correct? Low genetic diversity? What do you say about my family? I'm only relaying facts, Mr D. Now tell me, how would this proposed mine affect your species? Well, as I told you, there ain't many of us left. And the few of us that are left without cancer are in small, isolated areas. And this mine is supposed to be in one of those few remaining areas where we don't have the tumour. And come on, what else do you have to come to Tassie for if not us? Without us, what are you travelling two-legged things going to come here for? Not all the bloody lot. I can tell you, we are Tasmania. We're iconic, I tell you. And I think that's enough. Thank you, Mr Devil, for your time. Devil facial tumour disease, also known as DFTD, is one of the only two naturally occurring transmissible cancers. The cancer can spread like a contagious disease and is passed from devil to devil through biting when they fight. The live tumour cells aren't rejected by the animal's immune system because of a lack of genetic diversity among the Tasmanian devils. For this reason, cases continue to occur in areas where the disease has not previously been recorded. As of February 2011, there has been an 84% decline in average sightings of the devils across Tasmania during the annual spotlighting surveys. In the northeast region, where signs of DFTD were first spotted, there has been a 96% decline of average sightings. The management options for DFTD is limited. Strategies include isolation of uninfected individuals, identification and selection of resistant animals, for selective breeding and later reintroduction into the wild. Suppression of disease by culling or the development of a vaccine. In America, special rules for coal mining and some cooperation from select environmentalists has allowed coal removal from the Appalachian Mountain, which is obtained through mountaintop removal, through blowing the tops off mountains with dynamite and discarding the remains into mountain valleys and stream beds. The mountain peaks are home to one of the highest concentrations of biodiversity in the country. Beneath that biodiversity, since 28.5 billion tonnes of anthracite coal, according to estimates from the Department of Energy. Normally, the Fish and Wildlife Services are to formally review any federal authorised, funded or administered action that could negatively affect endangered or threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. However, the review standard is waived for coal mining. Instead, it relies on a document known as the 1996 Biological Option. 
In place of the formal reviews, the Office of Surface Mining and State Regulators requires mining companies to hire a government-approved contractor to conduct their own surveys for any potential endangered species. The surveys require approval from the state and federal biologists who provide inf formal guidance on how to minimise mines' potential effects to species. Despite the situation in Tasmania being handled better than that of America, it could still be argued that due to the rapid nature of the species' decline, areas of isolated healthy Tasmanian devils, like the one found in the Tarkai National Park, should be preserved above any benefits that may come with the implementation of the proposed Shree Company mine. Isn't that right, Mr D? Thank you.